<clears throat> Stephanie Douglas. when my instructor, Nomi, came up to me and said, hey, that thing has been up in Yael for almost 30 hours now, and we need to get her to the hospital, and I need you to go with her and translate. Yeah. Now, by Yael, she meant the Harry Potter-loving, kind feminist who was studying agriculture with me 15 kilometers outside of Ramallah in the Middle East. And by that thing, she meant a diva cup. Now, for those of you, besides those two, who don't know what a diva cup is, I want everyone to just picture a wine glass. Shrink it down. It's made out of silicone, so it's a little more gelatinous, and a woman uses it during her period instead of a tampon or a pack. It actually is inserted in, sits there, holds the blood. It is amazing. <laughs> you empty it twice a day, you're set. Uh, however, it didn't work out so well for poor Yael. It had somehow gotten stuck in there, and apparently uh, for the last 30 hours, people had been lying her on beds, turning her prostrate, using all sorts of implements we had on the farm, trying to remove this thing, and it would not come out. Uh, we were also in the middle of the desert, so you understand, so the nearest hospital was about an hour and a half hike away. And the other problem was the translate. So uh, we were in Israel, and my Hebrew is pretty solid, but my medical and anatomical Hebrew, mm, not so good. I know like three great synonyms for vagina, but I could not remember the actual actual proper word. <laughs> so, so I'm picturing, like, trying to translate in my head, like, get set, what I'll tell the doctor. And I guess to a native speaker, it kind of would have sounded something like, there is to her a cup. It is a cup for wine, but he is so far in, 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 straight, straight. His leg is gone. You, doctor, birthday the cup. <laughs> but I was pretty sure it would get across. Luckily, uh, one of our instructors, this instructor who had asked me to go do this, decided, hey, I know it's a long hike and this girl's kind of freaking out, so I'm gonna drive you and I'll leave you off at the triage unit uh, in the city of Modin. So she does, but when we get there, we actually find parking. So uh, this instructor who speaks gorgeous Hebrew comes in and I'm like, great, I can be a nice friend, hold her hand, hero, day done. Uh, so we get into the triage unit and she explains them in gorgeous Hebrew without asking them the birthday cup exactly what needs to happen. At which point the nurse is like, we don't do this. Excuse me? We don't do this, we don't handle this. Like you can't help, like this girl has a thing stuck in her. You can't, no, we don't do this. And I don't know if you've ever tried to argue with an Israeli in uniform, but you'll understand why we kind of just like left and walked away. Uh, so, so my instructor's like, hold on, my gynecologist's office is nearby here, I know them. So we show up to the office, it is padlocked shut. And at that point, like this girl Yael is just starting to tear up. She's kind of like shaking, like nothing's funny anymore. And, uh, and I'm like, okay. I look down the end of this long cement hallway and I see this light. And I am not a religious woman, but out of this light came a voice and it said to me, Arthur, you must pull this sword <laughs> from this stone. So we marched into a nearby dentist's office, asked for a pair of rubber gloves, and I was like, drive us back to the farm, meet me in my geodesic dome that's 140 square feet that I was living in in five minutes, and we are getting this thing out. <laughs> and this girl's looking at me like, okay. You know, she's believing nothing now. And, uh, and so I realized that, you know, they've had her on her back before when they've tried to do this, so I'm like, okay, prostrate's not gonna work, we're gonna have to use gravity. I need to rig something so she can squat over me. <laughs> and, uh, and so I sort of position my bed perpendicular to my roommate's bed with like a one foot channel that I can kind of squeeze myself into while she squats above me. And in what will be the second best move of the day, I put down a sheet. <laughs> So, so she gets in there, and I can see, like, this girl is tight. Like, she is a diamond, and I'm like, I'm like, there is no way, there's no way this is gonna happen, so I promise you, as a feminist and music lover, I will never forgive myself for what I did next, but I put on some Jack Johnson and offered her a beer to loosen her up. <laughs> As 
the sweet sounds of that little Hawaiian boy who was playing. I showed her how I wanted her to crouch, and she did so, and I kind of got behind her, and I gloved up my right hand, because that's my dominant one. And, and I kind of tell her, like, I'm explaining, like, here's what I'm gonna do, just relax, like, you're doing great, this is gonna be fine, we're gonna get this out. And that's when I realize, as soon as I insert the first little explorer, that that is all that is gonna happen. I mean, and, and I look at her and I'm kind of like, hey, Yael, like, have you, you know, has your hymen been broken? You know, she's 23 and she's like, well, my th I mean, my tampons, but this is kind of my first um, experience. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, I'm about to ruin finger banging for this girl. <laughs> So I kind of like recalculate and I figure out if I can kind of keep just sliding, there's no way I'm getting anything else in there. So if I can kind of relax her and just keep sliding and sliding, I can maybe get this thing and use gravity and my finger and whatever that back wall, I don't know what that's called in Hebrew or English, but the back wall inside, uh, I can somehow get this thing like to slide down. And I'm working and I'm working and it's like about 10 minutes and I, can, I finally get the stem of this little wine cup had moved sideways somehow. So I got it down. I got it pointing downward. And uh, and then finally I'm like, okay, nothing else is going to happen. So I'm like, yeah, hell, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you pee or cry or what happens. I just need you to relax your lower body. Whatever you can do, sweetheart, just relax your lower body. And somehow she did it. And there was still no way I was getting anything else besides this guy in there. But I, now I had room to like actually maneuver. Like I had a little space. And it's like a minivan, you know, when you have that space and you know what to do with it. So I'm like pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. And, and all of a sudden, 16 minutes in, we hear. And I'm like, holy sweet Jesus or whoever everyone worships out here. I just heard a pop. And we're, but we know we're not there yet, so I'm like, okay, you just need to keep breathing and keep releasing because I got that vacuum seal release, but it can reform in a second, so I need you to just let it go, baby, just let it go. And I'm going down, down, down. 23 minutes oh, wow. after this brave explorer jumped onto her inverted Everest, it came out. And as it came out, Yael jumps up excited and throws her arms around me and she's like, I'm free, I'm a free woman, I can't believe it, I thought I was gonna live the rest of my life with that in me, oh my God, you saved me. And that's when we noticed all the blood. <laughs> I mean, 36 hours by that point, and it was everywhere. I mean, my bed, my roommate's bed, <laughs> all over my arms, all the walls, the floor, and like this is all made of like, you know, natural desert material, so they're very porous. <laughs> Uh, so she kind of looked at me and she's like, uh, 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 celebrate, I'll, I'll clean, I'll clean things. And I start scrubbing and she runs the other things and I figure out, I'm going to explain to my roommate that I got someone else's menstrual blood all over all of stuff. <laughs> and when she walks away, I kind of started to feel really good for a second. Like, hey, you know, when that moment happened, I, I was the person who was willing to step up. But that was instantly replaced with the thought that like everybody talks about how great success tastes. But nobody ever mentions how weird it smells. <laughs> <laughs>